those. Where do you source the grains from for those products? All of our grains are local. So, uh, well, except for the mall. So, so the, West Virginia? So West Virginia. Now, it, we started off originally, it, it wasn't like that. We were getting uh, grain from a couple of different sources, mostly Ohio and West Virginia. But now we get, uh, excuse me, Ohio and North Carolina. Now we get everything except the mall from West Virginia. So a guy grows uh, uh, our corn and our wheat and our rye for us. We're starting to use a little bit of rye. None of these products have, we have have rye in it. Um, we take every bit of his organic production. So, very nice. Same steel you're using for the rye? Yeah, right. So we have two steels. We have a big Vendome. Well, I'll say big, big for a small guy. <laughs> about a 350 gallon Vendome pot that we use for, for stripping runs. And then we have a 175 gallon Carl that we use for whiskey runs, vodka distillation. It's a hybrid, so it's a pot with a column on the side. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so we, so we do everything on that. All of our, our spirit run are done on the Carl. It's a little bit more, uh, allows us to tweak it a little bit more than the Vendome. The Vendome is sort of like a pickup truck, and the Carl is sort of like a you know, BMW. What do you use for the botanicals on the gin as you pour those there? So there's uh, there's seven botanicals. It's juniper, coriander, cardamom, angelica root, lemon peel, orange peel, and black pepper. And these are all done through vapor infusion. And our gin is kind of a funny story. You know, most gin is made from, right, they take a grain neutral spirit of some sort, uh, and then they soak the botanicals in that grain neutral spirit and then distill it off. This is a very different. We actually start with our vodka as the base. So we actually make our base for our gin instead of using NGS or GNS. Right. Um, and so we, we actually make vodka and then we add, we have two or vodka like. So this is triple distilled. We actually stop it at two distillations and use that base to make our gin and then infuse it with two more distillations. So as stupid as it may sound, we actually have uh, our gin is actually distilled four times. So you'll taste some of that residual sweetness and some of that flavor in the gin. Uh, obviously very different from like a London dry style, right, where it's got some sweetness to it and got a little bit of body and character to the, to the base spirit. Um, so it obviously is pretty juniper neutral and more, more citrus forward. But I think that you get a certain, I mean, it's, it's nice to have those options because uh, I'm telling you there are definitely customers who come in and do not want London dry gin. And that's almost everything that we carry. Well, as, as crazy as it, as it might sound, you know, is, is um, if you want a really great, clean, crisp gin with lots of botanical, sort of punchy in the face, uh, botanical nose, juniper nose, the big boys, they, they got you covered. They do great, they do a great job. This was just, I'm not a big juniper fan. I wanted to make a sort of a new world style, new American gin, so this is really where, where that came from. I'm a big citrus fan. Let me give you guys a rant since we did gin. A rant with this. So the white whiskey that you're pouring now, is, is this the same formula as what you're putting down in barrel? Today? It is. So this is, a, this is our weeded, weeded bourbon. So it's, it started off as the same thing as a 60 corn, 20 wheat, 20 malted barley. Uh, but now it's actually been tweaked a little bit just because we happen to like a little bit more what we're making now than what we started off making. Um, so we're making a 73% corn, 15% wheat, 12% malted barley. Interesting. So that's pretty high in corn. Yeah, pretty pretty high in corn. Is that so? That's the exact same thing that's in the yearling bourbon as well. It is. So this is this is right as you guys know, white dog not been smoothed through the barrel, not been smoothed through filtration. It comes off the still about 142 proof. Uh, very grainy, dry, dusty. So now let's do the. Uh, it's like white whiskey. Let's do the yearling bourbon next okay. rather than the rye so we can see how that, that compares to it. I really like the yearling bourbon actually. When you're actually, talking let's about it. Too on this because I don't want you to have so much of a grain nose. On. I like what you said earlier when you know this is not, you're definitely going to plan on releasing the older um, found LDI and other distillery whiskey in, in the meantime, but the yearling will be kind of like. A, you're not going to keep releasing a two-year-old and, and three-year-old and four-year-old yearling, right? No, so we're going to release some, or we'll release some yearling, and, and maybe it becomes two years old at some point in time, just really enough to whet people's appetite for people to see what we're doing. But for the old scout, really has now allowed us to, to make mature bourbon uh, ourselves. So a nice uh, thing, yeah, a nice thing to have. Well, you know, John said earlier too that he, you know, he's Thank you. if he's not going to drink the white whiskey over the six-year-old whiskey. 
No. I love our white whiskey. If you take our whiskey and compare it to, to uh, you know, to some other white whiskeys, I think it's got a great flavor to it. It's still white whiskey, right? It, it was created obviously for a niche market for people who requested the product, but at the end of the day, it's still white whiskey. Most people don't know how to mix it. Most people don't know what to do with it. The, actually, the most popular thing that we do with white whiskey, there's this really popular drink in West Virginia called Apple Pie Moonshine. I'm sure you guys have seen it. I've Apple seen Pie. them for, uh, what was it? MB Roland did one of those, right? Yeah. Yeah. MB Roland, yeah. yeah. I, haven't, I haven't tried theirs, but, but, <laughs> but uh, a friend of ours t makes this, makes this, uh, makes apple pie with our white whiskey instead of moonshine. I've never served it to anybody ever and go, oh, that's okay. Everybody loves it. Oh, and wow. so we sell more of that for, for our uh, for apple pie than anything else. So it's really I like that though, because you're not putting on everything. Like, so many people come in and oh, it's the best white whiskey. It's, it's white whiskey. And I like that you're you have a, a good kind of down down to earth approach about it. Make me some apple pie, it sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the reality of it is, is we're I'm we're making whiskey. Uh, <laughs> talk. Yeah. We're actually gonna stop, we're actually gonna stop putting this on the market. We're gonna run through what we've got which is a little bit, little bit left, and then we're gonna stop. And the reason why is, is that our brand has sort of been elevated by these other things lately. Yeah. And, and I just don't want this to be, I don't want any retailer sitting on this going, man, I can't sell that white whiskey. I'm gonna close it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with you, that's a great, that's definitely true. So obviously, right. the, so what'd you think of the yearling? Young, obviously got some grain notes to it. But it's got some spice to it, it's got a little yeah. bit of butterscotch to it. It's got a lot of butterscotch to it for a young whiskey. I think that's all coming from the small barrel. This one, I don't know how old this one is. This one's a year and a year and nine months old. Are you? Is that from quarter cask? This this is actually from a blend of five, uh, tens, fifteens, and thirties. Oh, interesting. Um, so different sized barrels. Into different that. different sized barrels. But I haven't put away a small barrel in fourteen months. All right, so we're, you're we're definitely just, graduating out of the out of the small barrel uh, controversy right now. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I saw I read an article just recently. Uh, I think it was in Whiskey Advocate. That they didn't know anybody that had started off in small barrels and then graduated to the big barrels. Well, that's us. That's you. We, we yeah. just we we're already that. You know, we've got some stuff in small barrels, and we'll, that's probably what we'll release as yearling. But you're not going to release those small barrels as a single barrel. You're always blending them into other whiskeys, right? Always blending them. Yeah. In, yeah. See, I, I think that's great because the new Lafroy uh, Cargis is uh, has. Quarter cast blended in. It's, it's fantastic. Small barrels, on the are, small barrels are obviously a little, a little bit controversial, but they make some decent. They make some very good whiskey, but I don't think you can have everything in a small barrel. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the Ring Roll Scout. So this is obviously a source whiskey. It's uh, the majority of this whiskey is about seven years old. It was actually what is this from? The majority of this whiskey is now seven years old. We have a couple barrels. So this is interesting because old. the oldest LDI rye I've seen is. Well, this is six just years a, old from Willow, but this is seven. Oh, no, sorry, this is a six year old bourbon, but yeah. you have a seven year old rye there too. That's we'll right. get to that in a minute. So, this is, uh, this is a high rye, they're high rye bourbon, right? LDI basically, the you know, old Secrets facility basically made two big bourbon mash bills, right? What they call 25% bourbon and what they call 40% bourbon, which is 25% of the grain bill is small grains or 40%. Uh, in essence, it was 21%. It was rye and 36% rye and the rest of it, the other 4% was malted barley. So this is their high rye recipe. We bring it in, we find, we, we drill the ends of five barrels that we think we're going to like or a bunch of barrels. We take a sample of them, we blend that together. If we like what we taste and we basically dump all those, dump all those barrels into a, into a bottling uh, and create the next bottling. That's really how we, how we do Will's Pow. I think this bourbon is yeah. this bourbon's great. Lots of spice, lots of character. It's, 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 it's really drinkable for 99 proof, right? So the, that's the other thing that you're doing is you're not you're not necessarily doing cask, but you're bottling at high proof, which is great because it's 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 high enough to be interesting to people that want high proof bourbon, right. but it's not all not not everything tastes good at cask drink, and you've got a as you know, as much as you try to educate people to maybe add a drop of water or to experiment with their bourbon, most people don't. They just pour it out. I mean, I get at least one guy a week who comes back in with a cast strength whiskey and says, you know, I drink, this is undrinkable. And I said, well, yeah, it's at 124 proof or 130 proof. <laughs> oh, I don't want to tinker around with my whiskey. I just want to drink it. I had a, I had a, um, a 
cast strength, Thomas Handy, right, 14, I think it was 14 years old, 134.4 proof. And that's something you just you just can't sit down and just drink it, mm -hmm. right? You gotta slowly sip it and enjoy it. Talk about an amazing, complex whiskey. I wouldn't want to taste that now, having tasted it at very cast strength. I wouldn't want to taste that whiskey at 90 proof. No, I wouldn't It's amazing at 134 yeah. proof, right? So now you got the seven-year-old rye. So here's the seven-year-old rye. Obviously, this is an LDI, old LDI whiskey too. I don't know of anybody that has this uh, this whiskey at this age. Uh, we've got a bunch of it. I really like this. This is coming in. Coming in this it yet? It'll be here tomorrow. <clears throat> Do you know what that's retailing for right now, average? I think it's a buck or two more than Old Scout. Okay, so like 40, 40 ish, 40. That's probably right. 45 ish. I have to double check. Well, those are great. Thanks for talking about that. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys.